Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and welcome back to AL. And if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Today, we're going to be looking at another part of the Osterio series from the Elector July August 1975 magazine. They call it a disc preamplifier. Basically, this is a phono preamplifier. Now, this corrects for the RIAA curve, which I'll explain in just a moment, and is suited mainly for moving coil and moving magnet cartridges. Now, if you're using a ceramic cartridge, well, you don't need this circuit because they provide enough gain at their output as it is and corrects for the RIAA curve. So this is just a simple two-stage MPN amplifier circuit and this first transistor here is providing a little bit of gain but it's also doing another roll which I'll explain in just a second. The second stage here is the one that produces most of its gain that is controlled by this bypass cap across this 2K7 resistor. The power supply is decoupled via this 4K7 resistor and this 100 microfarad capacitor there. That just uh, helps prevent the high gain of this stage oscillating when it's connected to the preamp circuitry. These sets of four components here, this 6 nanofarad 8 12K resistor and this 120K 27 nanofarad respectively correct for the RIAA curve. And it's part of a DC negative feedback loop back into this first transistor. Remember I said that this transistor performs a second roll? Well, it's mainly correcting the curve so that you get the correct uh, frequency response at the output. Local DC feedback is taken from the emitter of the second transistor and fed back into the base of the first transistor and this also biases this transistor correctly because you'll notice there's no resistors going between the positive rail and the negative rail to set this at the halfway supply point. Well, that's the job of this resistor using feedback. It controls its gain as well. What is the RIAA curve? Well, here's a look at an image off of Wikipedia and the blue dotted line represents when the record is recorded and the red line is representing what the amplifier is doing to correct during playback. Now, we'll notice that on the recording curve, the bass from 1 kilohertz downwards to 20 hertz is severely cut. By the time it gets to 20 hertz, we're down 20 dB. And conversely, above 1 kilohertz, we'll notice that up to 20 kilohertz we can see that we are boosting those mid-range and treble frequencies by 20 decibels. Now, there's a reason for this, because when you go to cut the record, cutting a groove in the vinyl, uh, when it's uh, producing a very deep bass note, so like, you know, 20, 30 hertz, whatever, it's a severely large track, and not much would fit on the disc if there was no bass cutting and they boost the treble for a, another specific reason because vinyl records are very noisy above the four kilohertz range so by boosting the treble and then cutting it back down when you go to play it back reduces its noise so it's just a basic form of noise reduction you're still going to get like the rumble and the wow and the flutter from the turntable but yeah, there's other filters you can incorporate into the amplifier to correct for those as well. But that's the RIAA curve. So between 1 kilohertz and 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz respectively, we're boosting above 1 kilohertz and cutting below 1 kilohertz. And I'll do a demonstration when I build the preamp uh, as to how it performs with a frequency response without using what's known as a reverse RIAA filter. And what is a reverse RIAA filter, I hear you say? Well, basically, it's the same when you go to record a record. You're cutting the bass and boosting the treble. And that's exactly what this particular circuit here does. It's on Rod Elliott's ESP website, and the link is in the description. But his, his implementation, the source impedance has to be less than 100 ohm. I'm going to be using a function generator, so it may cause issues, but uh, that's the remaining to be seen. This is only going to be built up on the breadboard just so I can test the frequency response of the preamp to see after it's actually presented with an RIAA 
curve, whether it corrects it properly. And interestingly, what does RIAA even stand for? Well, anticlimactically, it stands for the Recording Industry Association of America. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Anyway, they were the people that came up with this specific curve, which is now a standard and has been in use for like the last 50 years or more. So let's build this circuit up on breadboard and test it out. So the circuit is built up on a piece of breadboard there. Now I will state that I don't actually have a record player or any vinyl records for that matter to even test this with. So it's just going to have to be using a function generator at this point. So I won't be able to do a sound test unfortunately. I know that's going to disappoint a few people. But if we can see a reasonably good response curve on the oscilloscope, then, yeah, it's going to be safe to assume that the original circuit works in its current configuration without having to modify it. So it's powered up and turned on. The yellow trace is measuring the output of the preamp, and the blue trace, which is very staticky and noisy for some reason, I'm not sure why, could be because I don't have the probe grounded. Might try grounding the probe and see if that... Uh, there we go, um, is measuring what's coming out of the function generator. So we can see we've got 710 millivolt RMS coming out and we're putting in roughly 69 millivolts RMS in. So uh, the average input level that the phono preamp will see is around about 3 millivolts. However, I can't measure down that low with this oscilloscope because it just doesn't have the resolution vertically and also the signal becomes very very noisy from the generator because of the noise floor of the generator. So currently the generator has been fed directly into the input of the preamp it's not going through that reverse RIAA filter so I might swap out function generators for my variable oscillator so we can actually vary the frequency without having to piss fart around pushing buttons to change the frequency. So let me just grab that. Okay, I've got the other oscillator hooked up and I've got it set down to as low as it will go, which is 12 millivolts. I actually thought it was higher than that. But it's not perfectly synsonoidal, it looks more triangular than anything else. But we can see with 12 millivolts in, we're getting 126 millivolts out. So that's a gain of roughly 10. So this little preamp will amplify by 10 times. And we're putting in almost a kilohertz, not quite. So if I play with the frequency, so we're going lower. We can actually see, if I change that, that the signal strength is getting larger. Okay, so let me just change this to a lower frequency setting which is the 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz 100 hertz rather look how much it's now shot off the screen at roughly 21.5 hertz and that's as low as the oscilloscope will go I think and that goes a bit further okay cool but we can see that we're now 940 well 1.15 volt RMS out now why? Because the preamplifier is boosting the bass, remember. So the lower the frequency, well, the larger the amplitude is going to get. So that's fine. So I need to go above 3 kilohertz for the next part. Actually, no, I'll go to 1, 3 kilohertz first. So as you can see, we're roughly back at 1 kilohertz, and we're getting 121 millivolt out with 12 millivolt going in, so again of 10 again. So let me now ramp this up to 3 kilohertz and we'll see what happens. We can see that the signal strength is starting to drop off. And that is exactly above 1 kilohertz what we should be seeing. So we're now at 3 kilohertz and we now I only have 53 millivolt coming out, so we've lost quite a fair bit of gain. So I'll ramp these back down to zero. I'll go from the 3 kilohertz position to 65 kilohertz position. There's our signal at roughly 3.18 kilohertz, 68 millivolt out, and we keep going up and up, and we can see that the frequency is start. Well, the signal strength is starting to roll right off. 
to the point where we have the same roughly coming out as we have going in and we're at like 27 kilohertz now so that is the RIAA curve in action so it is actually working um, as it should however let's now include the filter before the input which is this group of components at the front here so that connects there instead um, I don't really need to measure the input but I'll move that to over there I'll change back between I'll go from the 10 Hertz section first yeah we can see that the signals rather rather triangular uh, so I'll, I'll ramp this up because I don't actually see any output and we're at the max of the scope I have to get more amplitude because the filter in question also uh, has an L pad like attenuator on it as well so you need to pump more in so I'll get this so we can see it on the screen properly That's about as far as I want to go. I don't think I need to go any higher than that. So, now we can see that, well, there's a lot less coming out than going in, but that's only because, well, of the attenuator. Alright, so I need to adjust the frequency and see if the voltage output changes much. So I want to start at, well, not 8 hertz, I want to start at uh, 20, 20 hertz will be good if I can get it there right we're at around about 20 now okay so ignoring what the input voltage is uh, we're getting 164 millivolt out so I'll start increasing the frequency further and it is reducing a bit but not by much we're at 30 hertz we're now at 100 hertz 220 hertz so I'll go to the 100 so we've got 108 millivolt coming out increase that and well above 100 Hertz it's remaining relatively flat which is good so we'll get this up to 1 kilohertz still relatively flat between 101 kilohertz it's maybe dropping off a little okay so we're at 1 kilohertz so I'll change my position again and I want to go from well 3 kilohertz in this case we do have a bit of reduction here and it is rolling off so above 4 kilohertz it's, it's starting to roll off in fact uh, when does it actually start rolling off let me go back to the 3 kilohertz range So I want to get that as central with the scope lines as possible. Okay, we're actually distorting. Although the the uh, amplifier itself is not seeing the distortion. So anyway, we're at one kilohertz. And yeah, I want to say it's rolling off at the one kilohertz mark, but before one kilohertz, it remains relatively flat. And that is to be expected because of the treble cut circuit in the preamplifier itself. So, whether this will produce uh, reasonable highs or not, well, that's up to a listening test, but 
It could be that 6.8 nanofarad capacitor is probably not the quite the correct value. But it does say in the text, the sparse notes on that project number 45, that it does incorporate the filter network to correctly um, adhere to the RIAA curve. Um, but yeah, I've never actually measured a phono preamp itself anyway, but that's to do with, with the tolerances of the components on this breadboard, like the capacitors, plus any stray capacitance that the breadboard might be picking up. Also, the filter itself is using not quite the right values of capacitors. Um, in his design, he had a 46 nanofarad for the base part and a 16 nanofarad for the uh, treble part. And the only way you'd be able to do that is to put a 1 nanofarad in series with the 15 to make it 16 and to get 46 nanofarad you'd need like a 39 nanofarad and a 6.8 nanofarad in series something like that so the values of these capacitors here in the reverse RIA filter network are kind of important to get exactly right or else you will not get the correct frequency response curve. But we've tested it and this is about as far as I can go with it because, well, I don't actually have a record player. And even if I did, um, most of the records, if I play a track off of them, will most undoubtedly get a copyright strike anyway. Um, especially the music I listen to. So, however, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was only a short little one. Just wanted to test the concept of the circuit to see if it actually worked um, and it does and I do have plans for using this somehow and incorporating it into the Osterio project that I've already got a PCB on the way for which will be really exciting when we get to ground to building that. Um, that should be here in about another week and a half. So that's it. I'm going to leave it here. I've been the Astro 30. If you enjoyed it, please remember to go down below, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya. Happy phone preamps. Hmm.